deep inside the brain, information is communicated through the release of chemicals and electrical impulses. These impulses travel along brain cells called neurons. Scientists estimate that we have a hundred billion neurons forming networks and connections between the brain and the body. Motor neurons controlling the muscles and sensory neurons which share information from the environment. For example, what we see, hear, feel and taste. A popular theory of brain organization is that of the triune brain. This describes the brain in terms of three distinct sections with a hierarchy of refinement and consciousness. The first, lowest area deals with our physical and unconscious functions like breathing, heart rate and hunger and is known as the reptilian brain because we share it with reptiles like alligators. The second area deals with memory, emotions, bonding and reactions like the fight or flight response and is known as the mammalian or limbic brain. The top part of the brain is called the cerebral cortex and this deals with most of our conscious activity like reading, writing, art, thinking and performing skilled movements. The area at the front of the cerebral cortex is where input from all parts of the brain and sensory systems are filtered and integrated with thought and experience. And it's the smart brain that you're using right now to do most of the listening, looking and learning. When we experience stress in a negative way, activity in the front of the cerebral cortex and then across the whole of this smart brain decreases, leaving us functioning from the more emotionally reactive or reflexive lower centers. Unfortunately, this primitive survival mechanism still functions today and the stresses faced in our teaching and learning environments are enough to trigger these responses just at the time when we really need all the functions of our integrated higher brain centers to work together. If you look at the cortex, you will see that it is divided into two parts, referred to as the left and right hemispheres. These hemispheres are constantly receiving and sending information to and from the body and the senses. The hemispheres themselves are connected by a thick bundle of nerves called the corpus callosum. This acts as a bridge connecting the two hemispheres and enabling a constant flow of information. Interestingly, when the electrical impulses from the body and sensors arrive at the cortex, they have crossed over to the opposite side of the brain. However, each of us tends to be more reliant on one hemisphere than the other. Indeed, this dominance can also be seen in our hands, eyes, ears and feet. And our dominant hand, eye, ear and foot will feed information into the brain hemisphere on the opposite side of the body. When stressed, the communication between the right and left hemispheres is reduced, as we tend to operate predominantly from our default or dominant hemisphere.